they changed the premise of the series quite a bit in the fourth year, and the boys went into the army. And so I think there was less interest in them in the army. Um, I, I think it wasn't really a good direction for them to take. Uh, but they didn't know what to do in terms of expanding the show and having us grow up. It really made sense that Zelda and Dobie would get married, frankly, and they weren't going to go there yet. Uh, the other thing is television was changing a little bit. It wasn't quite all in the family yet, but you know, the 60s, there was just something different beginning to happen. Uh, when, uh, you know, Kennedy became president, Kennedy was assassinated, um, there was a beginning of a change in the country. It just wasn't so fatuous, so simple, so 50s anymore. So given what had happened with Zelda and then Zobie, Dobie Gillis ended, were you sort of ready to be off Dobie Gillis at that point? Did you still want to keep it acting? What I never wanted to be off Dobie Gillis. It was just, it was the best thing, really, of all the work that I had done. I loved being in the um, kind of, the, the camaraderie of it. You know, the, uh, it, it was like being in a great big family, and I wasn't from a great big family. It was my two folks and me and my little sister. And so I always kind of envied people that had, you know, big families. Mm -hmm. And this was like a big family. I really wasn't ready for it to be over. It was very sad. But I was cast pretty much right away uh, in, um, uh, in a series that was a spinoff from McHale's Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, as one of the uh, freelance jobs that I had done, uh, I did a, a McHale's Navy show, which they were putting together to kind of prepare for a spinoff about women uh, in the Navy uh, during World War II. Uh, the series was called Broadside. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was really a, a, a one of those kind of gang shows like Mikhail's Navy where y you couldn't really tell, you know, if you were even gonna have one or two scenes in the whole show. Uh, so it was really very m different from being, you know, third build on Dobie Gillis. Her name was Selma Kowalski and she was a mechanic uh, and they were out in the South Pacific during World War II, and they were the uh, motor pool. These women were the motor pool. Kathleen Nolan, who was later the president of SAG, actually, uh, was the star of it. Eddie Andrews was in it, Dick Sargent, uh, George Firth. Do you notice the theme there? Dick Sargent, George Firth, Sheila James, all gay, but, you know, not really out. Um, don't know how that happened. Uh, and it was, you know, it was a funny show, but it was very broad comedy. And um, it, you know, it, it lasted 36 episodes. I think I was out with Dick because he had a partner and I remember him coming over to uh, my house at the beach where I was living with my partner uh, for dinner. But I have to say there was, it was so scary and there was very little consciousness. I mean, we weren't part of a movement. You know, Dick didn't actually come out for quite a long time. Um, and I helped with that, which I know we'll get to, but um, not really. I didn't hang out with gay people. I didn't really know much about what their lives were like. There really wasn't any character development, I have to say. Uh, it was, you know, it was like a cartoon where you would have your lines, you would say your lines and then um, that would be it. There, you know, we didn't really develop a character. The best thing about it, though, was because we were supposed to be the motor pool, um, we all had honorary Teamsters cards because you weren't really allowed to drive vehicles on the set unless you were a Teamster. And part of our work, we had to drive vehicles on the set because that was in the show. So we became honorary Teamsters, which, um, I did so much work with them later about trying to keep production in California that it was really sort of fun that I was an honorary teamster, you know, way back in the 60s.